there is something more interesting about Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. As he grew older, as he grew older, he wanted to marry the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam two years after Hijrah. You know what? Imagine someone wants to marry your daughter. Think about who your daughter is. Can she be better than the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The answer is no. Can there be subhanallah? Or in fact, let's think about it for a moment. Here you have Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu coming to the Prophet ﷺ and he wants to marry the daughter. There is a whole story. There are a few narrations, but we're getting to the point. He had nothing. The Prophet ﷺ said, what do you have to give my daughter as a mahar? What is a mahar? A mahar is a gift that is given token from the groom to the bride to say, you know what? This is a token. Hadiyah. The value of the marriage is no way connected to how much you are giving. Remember that. The more expensive you make it, the more difficult perhaps you are making it for people to marry. Let's think about it. Here is the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, Oh Ali, you don't have anything. What about the armor that you have? He says, Yes, I've got one armor. I've got armor, but obviously I use it. He says, No problem. Take it to the market, sell it. Whatever you get for it, you can give as a gift to my daughter and we will accept you. He had nothing. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. How many of us would give our daughters to a brilliant person who's responsible? He has deen and character, but he doesn't really have much wealth. See the silence? It means none of us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I promise you, we've become so demanding. We look at wealth. What do you have? The man says, uh, well, I just drive a Toyota. No way. The day you drive the latest Mercedes, come back. If not, get out. We don't mind getting our daughters married to those who have no respect in community. Absolutely no deen, no character, but they've got a lot of wealth. People respect only their money. And we don't mind getting our daughters married. Those are the daughters that at times or mostly they suffer because the, the person they've married has nothing besides money, no character, no conduct, perhaps an alcoholic, a drug addict, someone who's abusive, etc, etc. My brothers and sisters learn from the example of the best of creation. Don't we say that we want to follow him? We do follow him. Why then don't we allow our daughters to marry those whom they would like when there is deen and akhlaq? Subhanallah. When you have a person with great character and conduct, what's wrong? Subhanallah. Why do we object? So this young man goes with his armor to the market and you know who sees him there? Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an. He saw Ali ibn Abi Talib selling his armor. He says, why are you selling your armor? He says, you know what? I want to become your brother-in-law. Wow, 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 wow. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an who was married to the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu as well. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu goes with his armor. He's saying, I want to marry the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu Now, what would happen in our case? A lot of the times the brothers would actually say, meaning the husbands of the sisters would say, I'm a rich man. And Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu was very rich. This guy is a pauper. He's worth nothing. They would go to the family and say, please don't make a mistake. This guy's got nothing. Look at what Uthman says. Uthman says, you know what? I will buy that armor from you. I'll pay you 400 gold coins for it. And one narration says 480 gold coins for it. I will pay you so much for it and give me the armor. You can take that and get married. Mashallah. What an honor. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. So he got married. He actually took the money. According to some narrations, 480. Let's say 480 gold coins. He paid for the armor and as Ali ibn Abi Talib excited going back. Wow, I've made some big bucks here. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. And he's going back. Uthman says, hey, come back. So as he is coming back, he says, you know what? You're going to be getting married now. I'm giving you a gift. What's the gift? This armor. Subhanallah. I got the armor and I got 480 gold coins. Wow. From who? Someone who is married to the sister of the one I want to marry. Allahu Akbar, we have a lot of lessons to learn from this. Let's look at our relationships. Would we be prepared to give someone money to get married to someone? Subhanallah. And they're not really deeply related to us as such. We wouldn't even give it to our own brothers. Your brother wants 400 of your bitcoins. No way, bro. Not at all. May Allah forgive us. Sorry, I don't mean to interfere in the ruling of bitcoins, but I had to give the example. 
By the way, Verge is a little bit better than Bitcoin for those who know. My brothers and sisters, I promise you, we're not prepared to let go of anything. Subhanallah. I see some of you are looking at me like, wow, he knows about it. Okay. Yes, I do. I'm also a human being. Mashallah. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. And by the way, the Zimbabwean currency, when it was around, it was just like Bitcoin. Subhanallah. They used to print as much as they could. And that was it. Subhanallah. Suddenly, one day they announced it's no longer. <laughs> we tasted that. So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was a fortunate man, very, very fortunate, subhanallah. Here he is and he ended up getting married. What a blessed marriage. To whom? To the daughter of the best of creation. He chose not based on money. So that's the mistake we make today. We base our choice on money, wealth. That's, that's a family, they've got a lot of money. Trust me, they might have only money, nothing else. And sometimes Allah will take that away in no time. I know of people who've made a decision based solely on money. And a year down the line, that family lost all their money. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us deen and akhlaq. And may he make us choose in the correct way. So this was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu's marriage and the beautiful story around it. He had such a brilliant relationship with Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. He named one of his children Uthman. Now you might think, you know what? I only know of Al-Hassan wal Hussein. From the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he only had Al-Hassan wal Hussein radiallahu anhuma. But after she passed away and she passed away only six months after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, who was her father. Do you know what happened? He married again. He had a few wives. From them, the children he had, he kept the names of those whom he loved the most. And we are never told about this. So one of the sons of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was called Abu Bakr bin Ali radiallahu anhu. Another son, he named him Umar bin Ali radiallahu anhu. Why? These were his best friends. No one talks about this. They only say, oh, there was a big problem between them. No way. I would never name my child a name of someone whom I've had a huge issue with. No, it depicts the closeness of relation. He named another child Uthman bin Ali radiallahu anhum jami'an. May Allah be pleased with all of them. This is an amazing, amazing thing that people don't speak about. I think we need to speak about it a little bit more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And that goes to show the names they kept were of value such that they had people with those names who were better than what they thought they were. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Also with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, whenever they saw Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, they knew that we are going to find Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu close by. He's going to be close. They used to walk together, although he was much younger. If he was 30 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it means he was 28 years younger than Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. But he used to love him so much, walk with him, follow him, go around with him. The day that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was appointed the Khalif, someone told Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu that Abu Bakr has just been appointed the Khalif. He was still in his bedding. He quickly got up and he was putting on his clothing, rushing towards him, and he pledged allegiance as one of the first. Subhanallah. From the first batch, he pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr. And he said, I pledge allegiance to you and you are indeed Khalifatul Muslimin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. What a great man. So wise at a young age, very, very young age. So subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about Ali, Ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he says, Oh Ali radiallahu anhu. Remember, he was one of the greatest of the companions, the top 10. In fact, he was fourth in rank, powerful. He says, Oh Ali, the people will be divided regarding your rank into two. Some will take you very high above your rank and some will drop you very low below your rank. But those who are correct will be neither of the two. They will be the middle path. Those who know exactly what your status is. And this was a miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had prophesied something that happened later on. Some take him right all the way to Godhood. May Allah protect us. And some drop him and remove him even from the, the fold of Islam. Astaghfirullah. But we are the middle path. We say he was the most honored. We will never utter one bad word about him. Never. 
we will honor him and his entire family. And we know whenever you say Ali, you must say, may Allah be pleased with him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with every one of us.